Prepare for an extraordinary journey as we bring together six talented developers and dare them to create a unique video game. The adventure unfolds as the first developer kicks things off with just a few precious hours, shaping the game world to their vision before passing the torch to the next in line. They say actions speak louder than words and in this venture, that's all they have. There's no communication between each developer, which ignites the fuse for unexpected twists and turns. Picture this, we've had shooters seamlessly morph into dazzling dance arcades and helicopters take flight as raging superheroes. Yet amidst the chaos of misinterpretations and mind-bending transformations, a silent synergy often emerges. An unspoken connection blossoms, each developer builds upon the foundations of the one before, culminating in a final inspiring creation. So without further ado, let's dive headfirst developer number one. Hey, I'm Iridus. I work on Have, a game where you have to control two characters at once. Wishlist Have on Steam and check out the devlogs on our YouTube channel. Very excited to be the first one to start this project. So, first of all, I brainstormed some ideas by creating a simple character controller and accidentally stumbled on a car lake movement, which gave me an idea to make this into a driving game. So, I played around with different gameplay aspects and I noticed that it's quite fun to actually drive into things and it's probably even more fun to run over something. So, I made some basic enemies that the player could run over with his car and spent around an hour adjusting the car's movement until I made it so unsatisfying to control. Then I added a speedometer, an option to use brakes, camera follow and made it so that the player can only run over enemies when he reaches a certain speed. After that I made an enemy spawner, gave enemies some basic animations and started working on the core game loop, which is to basically survive for a given amount of time while running over as many enemies as you can. When the time runs out, the enemies will be blasted away, then you will be able to drive into a garage to upgrade your vehicle. Before working on the garage, I made a quick explosion effect. Then I created the garage model, made it so that it opens up only after the wave is over and added a neat camera transition when the player enters the garage. Afterward, I noticed that it was annoying when you cannot see the car, so I gave it an outline to make it more visible behind the walls. To visually show that the player has to enter the garage, I added an arrow which points exactly to the garage door after the wave is finished. As soon as I came up with this game idea, I imagined it to be very juicy, so I made an enemy death splat effect, dirt effect that is played whenever enemies are spawning, and some additional car movement effects, such as tire marks and smoke. Then I added a cool 3D car model and started working on the first upgrade, a shooting turret. I spent way more time on it than I expected to because of the numerous issues that I have encountered, such as this invisible enemy or I don't know what the hell this even was but I still got it working in the end. After that, I made it so that it's actually possible to buy the turret upgrade after finishing a wave and gave the shooting some visual upgrades as well. Finally, I spent the final hour polishing the visuals, creating a bit more complicated level design and adding a quick tutorial. I also wanted to create an additional enemy type, but I ran out of time at this point, so yeah. That's it. Now guys, if you also want to learn how to make video games, now is an incredible chance to join our course, Game Dev Rockets. So you'll go from complete beginner to learning all the skills required to create and sell your very own commercial games on Steam. Now we've just opened it up again with a major update, Multiplayer Mastery, where you'll learn how to build an online multiplayer FPS, complete with cosmetics, a live chat system, and leaderboards. This expansion was made in collaboration with the dev behind Paint Warfare, and there's only 100 seats available, so head over to GameDevRocket.com as soon as possible if you truly want to turn your passion into a career. If you rather keep game dev as a light hobby, you can also check out our free introductory training on how to make your first 2D and 3D games in Unity. The link is in the description. Now, back to dev number two. Hey, I'm Manisha and I have a small YouTube channel where I share game dev things. I'm currently in the early stages of development for a 3D mystery adventure game. So the first thing I did when receiving the files was to see what the state of the game was at this point. So far we had an isometric survival game with a wave system featuring a car with tank controls. The garage also had upgrades for your car with one, the turret already implemented. The first thing I wanted to work on was the game over state when the health reaches zero. I also disabled the movement when that happens and gave the player the option to restart. The enemies also hurt you only once on collision, so I made sure that they damage you every couple seconds instead. While I was at it, I also added knockback to the truck because it was easy to get stuck in places, and I made it so that if you crash into the wall at highest speeds, 
it also damages you. Next up, I wanted to get some visuals rolling. Since we have a car that's basically running over enemies, I thought making it an apocalyptic world was the best way to go about it without seeming too cruel. I'm not a 3D artist, so I had to go searching for some assets to use, and I settled on Kenny's zombie pack for the characters. So I popped those in, and after some buggy behavior, I was able to get it working as needed. What's an apocalypse if a million zombies aren't trying to tackle you? I found some buildings that I could use and recolored them to fit the aesthetic a little bit better. I really wanted to add upgrades, but since it felt early enough, it felt like a good time to experiment a little and do some changes that could affect the gameplay and create more opportunity for the next devs, aka cause a little chaos. <laughs> I thought it would be awesome if we could switch from third person view to a first person view during the game. The incentive being that you can have better control in first person view compared to the tank controls and have a better outlook of the area in third person view. I thought it could bring a pretty unique spin on the game. So I looked up some models that might have a cool interior and I found this mystery van looking type of model. I would have just replaced the entire truck model, but I wasn't sure if the previous dev actually handcrafted it, so I just settled on replacing it for the driving portion only. I added a bit of lighting in there, and I set up a virtual camera using Cinemachine so that I could swap between the cameras pretty easily. I really dig this new driving mode because it feels a little bit more immersive, and just seeing the zombies' faces when running them over makes me feel kind of bad. So, just to wrap up, I made it so that the upgrades actually cost blood coins, and I fixed up a little bug that the turret upgrade had. I slapped together a scoring system based on the kills, and hopefully this gives a better idea for the player about how well they're doing as the waves pass. Hopefully we get some better level design, upgrades, and maps in the next rounds. I'm excited to see what they do. Thanks Blackthorn Prod for having me. Hey everyone, I'm Alex Rack 2 developing a multiplayer FPS called Havoc on Steam. At first seeing the project, I instantly thought of limbs flying when you ran into zombies. The blood effects is a nice touch, but it's missing some juice, some screen shake, and some more feedback when ramming into the zombies. To start with limbs, I took the zombie in Blender and I broke it up to multiple pieces. From there, once the enemy is hit, I added velocity based on the player. Once the first wave is finished, there's a garage there which I saw you could buy a turret, so I decided to add two items of my own. One was thruster so you could be lightning McQueen and speed into zombies, which was quite easy to add. I modeled some low poly thrusters, then just amped up the speed of the car for a short duration, mixing some cool particles and FOV chains and it came out pretty cool. Next item that I made was blades. It was basically long blades on the side of the car which can help clear more zombies than just the front ram, which results in more coins. From here I wanted to add another power up since all I see are health pickups, which I believe would be very cool if we could continue adding on crazy items and power ups and create a sandbox style game. So I created a power up which shoots multiple missiles down in random spots which can help clear waves. Lastly as I'm running out of time, I needed to create a power up spawner, which spawns power ups throughout the wave. As of right now the power ups are just preset so once they are used they don't come back. So I made a script which after X amount of time it would run through each power up and pick one based on a chance of spawning. So we could have more rare items to less rare like health pickups. Hi, I'm Ryan. But if you're one of my 11 YouTube subscribers, you may know me as Advance9, that electrical engineer turned game dev who is working on his first open world game called Nightstones, all while taking care of his adorable yet crazy little kids. When I got a hold of the project, I was really impressed by how much of a game there already was, so I decided to concentrate on level design to increase the engagement of the game. This would also give me the opportunity to work on my modeling, which is one of my weaker skill sets. I fired up Blender and created four modular sets of wall assets that I could mix and match to create infinite shapes with. I headed over to low spec for a color palette and I made a texture from this CC29 palette. I developed a custom shader for my game Nightstones, which works great for bright and vibrant colors, but I found it also looked good on these assets, so I imported it into the project. Then I built a level. And now I found the game to be more fun and challenging, with lots of turns to navigate. I wanted more dynamics in the camera, so I added a third camera view to the game that the player can select. Time to put the buildings back in, and uh, shoot, this doesn't match. Back in Blender and it's time to create a bunch of tin burden houses all from this cube. Two loop cuts, rotate, bevel, now I have a wood beam. And I can duplicate, scale, and rotate this beam to create the frame of a spooky house. Build walls and windows with the plane and the knife tool, add a roof, build two more haunted houses with the parts from the first one, build four unique prefabs from the three models, place the houses everywhere, assign HDR materials to the windows, add bloom to make it look like the windows are lighting up, add maximum bloom because there can never be enough bloom. Oh. 
Oh, my eyes saw too much bloom. Lower the bloom, and now I'm done with 15 minutes to spare. Did you say I have 15 more minutes? Model one scary tree. Scale and rotate one scary tree everywhere to create a scary tree for us. Okay, now I'm really done. I hope you guys like what I've added to the game. If you'd like to support me, I'd really appreciate it if you could wishlist Nightstones on Steam. Thank you so much for your consideration. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone. First of all, I'd like to apologize if you're hearing um, back noise. I'm right next to a very busy street. I began by play testing the game and taking notes. I quickly noticed the performance going down and the culprit was all the error messages we were getting. So I went through them all and fixed it. After that, I noticed the UI did not fit the screen really well when changing its dimensions. So I fixed that super quick too. Instead of spawning enemies around the specific points of the map, I made it so that they spawn randomly anywhere within the baked mesh. This way we will avoid bugs like this. And then I tried the thrusters and they were super wonky. Super, super wonky. After looking at the code, I noticed that there were um, three instances of force to the car, which made it a bit awkward to use. I reworked the thrusters, and now after a short delay, you get an increased acceleration and maximum speed. And then over time, these numbers go down to normal. Another thing I added to the thrusters is now you can use them to burn zombies. If they walk into your butt, when you are charging the thrusters, they get burnt. There was literally no feedback whenever the player got hit. So I created a small animation that kind of like shakes, shakes the car a little bit, created a spawn animation, as well as uh, four different attacks. The attacking was a little bit messy. There were um, times where they wouldn't really attack. The way I reworked the attack is that now whenever enemies come within a certain distance, a random attack animation will play. Then after a small delay, the enemy will calculate the distance between the player and car. And if it is within his attack range, then the player will get hit. Turn the garage into a junkyard. Now you can see the upgrades on the floor and whenever you upgrade something, they disappear from the floor. I noticed the car didn't hold on to any blood when running over enemies. So I programmed this quick little thing that spawns a very light transparent line render. Thank you guys for having me. Hello, I'm Alex and I've been developing a multiplayer game called Paint Warfare for three to four years. And I've also been working with Noah on a full multiplayer FPS course for Game Dev Rocket. This is some serious serial killer stuff. The devs before me really did a wonderful job. Now my first order of business was to make this UI a bit nicer. So I wanted to make the UI a bit more diegetic. So first I made this coin icon for the coins in the top right corner. And I made a nice animation for each time you get a kill. And then I made this nice speedometer that visually shows you your speed, which I just think looks absolutely awesome. And then finally I reworked this HP bar with this nice icon that I made, so you can see at a glance how much health your car has. Now I realized that the junkyard was pretty bland, so since I had a bit of time I decided to rework it, and I wanted to add a tier system to the turret upgrades. So in Blender I modeled a double turret which will shoot twice as fast, and then a massive turret which will shoot three times as fast. Now my goal for the new junkyard UI was bigger buttons, having upgrade paths, and having icons for each of the upgrades so you can actually visually see what you're actually unlocking. So I got all my turrets and all the upgrades that we had in the game, and I screenshotted them and cleaned them up really nicely. And then I started on the UI. And that was pretty much all I got done on the first day. So on the next day, I got to work on the multiplayer. Now it's pretty hard to make a multiplayer game from the ground up in of itself. But what's even harder is sort of restructuring an existing single player game to support multiplayer. So I sort of had to hack this together, approaching it sort of one mechanic at a time. So the first thing I tackled was this nice room system, which I pretty much stole from the tutorial. Then I synced up the player movements and the rotation and the health system. The way the junkyard works is it waits for the owner of the match to finish their upgrades. And once you've gone into the junkyard in a round, you can't go back in. Um, so everyone at each round gets an opportunity to upgrade their car. Now the next thing I tackled was this game over. Now the first thing I did was I made it a bit more juicy when you die. So I made the car black when you die. And I added a nice smoke effect with the Unity Particle system. Now with the current single player version of the game, when you died, you'd pretty much be stuck there watching the other player drive around and such. And my goal for this was to make this game eventually sort of teamwork based. So I settled on making a revive system. So I made the UI for this in 3D space. So you just have to stand inside this radius of the player. And I made a nice progression UI to show how much longer you have to stand to revive that player. Then I did some other stuff like adding nicknames and player colors. 
And yeah, from there, you may notice that there's a pretty big problem with this game, and that's that it's pretty much completely silent. So first, I made an engine sound for the truck, which I just programmatically varied in pitch based on the velocity of the truck. Now, you may notice that when you hit stuff and you, your car goes completely still, the engine just pretty much switches to the lowest pitch. So I added some nice smoothing to it and switched up the sound. And I also made a nice impact sound, which varies in loudness based on the combined velocity of you and the object that you're hitting. I added some random tire skills for when you change direction really quickly. And the final thing I needed to add was the zombie death sounds. So I played around with this. Originally I had this sort of slap sound that I recorded, but that didn't really fit. So I ended up just using some zombie growl sounds for when you kill them, which works great because they're pretty short and kind of funny, which adds to the charm of the game pretty much. And then finally, I worked on the final touches. So I added some subtle background growl sounds, which I recorded to really add to the ambiance. I'm extremely happy with how it turned out, with the multiplayer and everything, so we'll see what everyone else thinks. By the way, if you'd like to learn how to make a multiplayer game similar to this, Game Dev Rocket is offering a free upgrade to all its paid users, with a multiplayer masterclass to take you from being a complete beginner in Unity multiplayer to a pro with everything you need to know to make your very own multiplayer FPS game. Okay, so I have to choose a nickname. Okay, let's be a uh, bl uh, blue guy. Oh, no one took my level away, you guys are amazing. My haunted houses remain. I like the speedometer. Particle effects are amazing, actually. They add a ton. Oh, and someone redid the garage. I ran out of time. I wanted to do the garage, like, to make it match the rest of the haunted houses. And I love that someone did this. Oh, I guess these are my credits, so I can't really buy anything. Okay. Yeah, the, the core mechanic is, is exactly the same that I did, so which is nice. Oh, I'm surrounded by zombies and trying to talk. I can't do it. Good job, you guys. Let's hope it works. Perfect. So let's, yeah, let's all play the game. It's so difficult to drive the car. <laughs> oh, it's it's actually very fun to r run over zombies in the first person. Probably like the like the least chaotic result that I saw <laughs> in these challenges. That's because you did a really good job. You you built the whole like, game loop almost right from the start, so people had a clear like, trajectory to follow. Well, actually, actually, Manisha, you were the second developer. Like, how how hard was it then? Like, just jumping in. I think overall it was okay. Like, I I played it for the first time and like there was the game loop already established. Either I like add more upgrades, get some atmosphere going, and then I wanted to add at least one big change. I thought it was, <laughs> it wasn't too crazy, but adding the first person view like was something that was a little bit bigger, but didn't change the, uh, the entire idea of the game. How would you, for example, expand on the game from here? Bring more competitiveness there. So like knowing how, what other people's scores are maybe. Maybe, maybe you could even destroy some, like some, some player if you damage him too much and he is just left out for the round. Yeah. Oh, another thing I thought of, um, like while I was developing, I just didn't have time, were like little objectives. So like little goals that you have to um, complete like missions. Having a, a score with a score multiplier would be really nice. You know, having it like uh, if you kill two enemies in a short amount of time, your score goes to times two, times three, times four. Mm. It would be also awesome to see like different enemy types. And uh, oh, I yes. was actually even trying to do something like that when I was developing it, but I basically ran out of time, so I couldn't even do anything interesting. Yeah, I had like a heap of ideas. I was just like so time consumed by the multiplayer. So like my goal was to make it more cooperative. Also like there was, there was gonna be like a donation mechanic, so you can like donate coins to your teammate. Because right now it just felt like a free for all battle <laughs> that you have to steal yeah. the gold from other people. Kind of like a, a taxi company or something. And it could be kind of like an overcooked style cooperative game where you've got a list of customers and you're kind of like, you know, Manisha quickly go for a customer with a yellow dress and bring her to this neighborhood destroying zombies and stuff, trying to like take little people and bring them to different locations. It could be like you're trying to, it's pedestrians instead of zombies and you've got to try to not crush them, but you've got to go as fast as possible also. Remember that if you also want to make games, you can learn how to do so with our course Game Dev Rockets. This is our ultimate roadmap to Game Dev success. It's just opened up again with a massive expansion multiplayer mastery. We're super excited guys. Now is a great time to learn how to bring your game visions to life. With that said, thanks for watching, like and subscribe and see you real soon.